So hello guys, it is Power Week, it means that the Power BI team has released a new Power BI desktop update and this time it is October 2020. There are tons and tons of updates, so I'm going to give you a quick review so you can just learn what's new and then just pick what interests you to learn more about, okay? So let's get started. So the first update I want to talk about is the new onboarding experience for new users. They call it Canvas Watermarks, and they are basically um, guides that you can find when you first open Power BI. So instead of having a blank canvas, you have buttons that you can click to get started. I think they're beautifully designed. They're placed in the right places, intuitive. So this is very, very well done. The samples that we talked about on Monday, they are still there, but they have added news and you can go and check them out so now you have even more resources to play. Other than that, they have personalized visuals in the services generally available and you can now disable them at the page level. Before you could only disable them at a visual level, now you can disable for an entire page, which is neat. And the data point select or the lasso select is now available for the tree map too as well as you can export data from the Q&A visual. So those are the things available on the reporting page. When it comes to data preparation, this is my favorite feature for the October update. It is dynamic M query parameters. And what that basically is, is if you have big tables, you probably are using direct query. And if you're using direct query, you're probably also trying to minimize how much data gets queried. So would you have the possibility now is you can create parameters. Let's say that we have a big product table with sales and we have different product teams. So I can create a parameter that we say, okay, I work with mobile phones. So I can filter as a user, I can filter the data set back in the query with a filter on the visual pane. So I can filter by uh, phones and then I will grab the data from phones directly from the query, or if I work on TVs, I can just filter TV and then I will get only the data for TVs, which makes the table smaller dynamically. Beautiful updates for sure. And when it comes to importing data, there are new, the possibility to discover tables in Excel and discover table in JSON, which is very nice if you are new to Power Query. It will allow you to find your data easier without so many transformations. So data connectivity for the data flows connector is now supported in other countries. You have Germany, UAA, Switzerland, and South Africa. So congratulations, guys. Maria database supports direct query, really neat. And uh, there is an updated SharePoint list connector you have to use on when you are picking it version 2.0, which basically allows you to import only default views instead of everything and it's improved performance. I don't use the SharePoint list a lot. I use more the SharePoint folder. So I don't know if that applies for everything, I'm betting that it doesn't, but anyhow, if you're using SharePoint list, this is a great update. So for the mobile updates, we have automatic page refresh for the Windows app. And for the mobile apps, they support now notched screens. And notched screens is like, for example, the Samsung, uh, the latest Samsung phones and the iPhone phones, where you don't have like these uh, borders on the screen that you can utilize the entire screen. So it is now displayed for the Power BI app so you will have more canvas to play with basically power bi embed there are two updates there you now have a view role on the power bi api and also it is the new look that is going to be rolled out in the service now in october is going to be rolled out also on the embed version so they are going to look the service and embed are going to look exactly the same which is great news for usability obviously so news on template apps also, it is going to be easier to install a template app, which is actually a great thing. Now you can pre-populate the parameters that you use to connect. So you make it use easier for your users to connect to the template app. Great. Not only that, but it's now easier to import data from your template apps in Power BI Desktop because they have other new places where you can just click and get your apps. And last but not least, they have other direct queries. So if you are developing template apps, you have the possibility to connect to the source direct query instead of importing the data. So it will open up for a new range of template apps, basically. So now some cool 
small updates that you definitely need to know. You know that you could you can create a template of a Power BI report, well now you can create a template of a Power BI connection so that your users can just click on it and connect to a data source without any issues, which is super cool. There is a new icon, you, I'm sure you haven't missed it, and it's going to pop up absolutely everywhere. It looks like Google Analytics, but it's not Google Analytics, so don't get confused. There is, uh, you know, when you're launch, launching Power BI Desktop, you click on the icon and then it starts. The startup screen, you couldn't cancel it. Now there is a possibility to cancel the loading. So it will appear across on the launching image. So you can just cancel that, which is quite neat, actually. It was a little bit annoying. Now, Windows 7 support goes away 2021, which means that the Power BI team is not going to support Power BI for Windows 7 either. So you need to be on Windows 8 and upwards, okay? And not only that, they are also upgrading the .NET version used in Power BI. So if you're using Windows 10, it's no problem because you're going to get that, that .NET version by, you know, the updates. But if you're using other Windows versions, you need to install the new version, okay? So I was not supposed to do this video today. I was going to do reveal the life expectancy report from Microsoft. Um, I'm not sure I have time to do that today or tomorrow. So I might leave it for next week. Okay. So we might do it uh, say serious next week. Uh, but we'll see. Basically, I might see you tomorrow. Otherwise, I'll see you on Friday. So until then, as always, take care and bye bye.